Welcome to the seventh lecture in Applied Math. The topics that we will explore in this lecture include a few applications of point groups and an introduction to matrices. Okay, so first we'll start with the exercises from the previous lecture. And first we are to assign xenon tetrafluoride to a point group. Xenon tetrafluoride has a square planar geometry. The principal axis is a C4 axis. And there are one, two, three, four C2 axes that are perpendicular to this axis. And the plane of the molecule itself is a horizontal mirror plane. And so xenon tetrafluoride is in the D4H point group. Okay, so next we are to construct the Cayley table for the C2V point group. And we can use the water molecule as a representative mo molecule. Let's call the plane of the molecule a sigma v plane. And let's call the plane that passes through the oxygen molecule, or correction, the oxygen atom, perpendicular to the sigma v plane, the sigma v prime plane. So the C2V point group has four elements the identity, the C2 operation, the sigma v operation, and the sigma v prime operation. Notice that each of these elements are their own inverse. So if we first perform sigma v and follow that by rotation by 180 degrees, then this is the same as reflection through the sigma v prime mirror plane. And if instead we first rotate by 180 degrees and then reflect through the sigma v plane, once again this is the same as reflection through the sigma v prime plane. Now if we first reflect through the sigma v prime plane and then rotate by 180 degrees, then this is the same as reflection through the sigma v plane. Similarly, if we first rotate by 180 degrees and then reflect through the sigma v plane, this is the same as reflection through the sigma v plane. And so if we now reflect first through the sigma v prime plane and then reflect through the sigma v plane, then this is the same as rotation by 180 degrees. And similarly, if we first reflect through the sigma v plane and then reflect through the sigma v prime plane, this is the same as rotation by 180 degrees. And so the Cayley table for the C2V point group is as follows. You have identity, C2, sigma v, sigma v prime. Same on the first column. 
Each element is its own inverse. C2 followed by sigma v is sigma v prime. C2 followed by sigma v prime is sigma v in the same in the opposite order. Sigma v followed by sigma v prime is C2, same thing in opposite order. And so this is a, an abelian group of order 4 that is not generated by any of its elements. So next, notice that any element, or rather any molecule, of the form AX4, where X is a bonding atom, but not necessarily all the uh, X's are the same, has a tetrahedral geometry. However, not every molecule with a tetrahedral geometry has tetrahedral symmetry. For example, dibromo difluoromethane has a tetrahedral geometry. what is a C2V molecule. Dibromo difluoromethane has a C2 axis. This is its primary axis of rotation. It also has two vertical mirror planes. One mirror plane that passes through both bromine atoms and one mirror plane that passes through both fluorine atoms. This molecule does not have a horizontal mirror plane, and so this is a C2V molecule. Okay, so let's look at a few examples and applications of point groups. Now, molecular polarity results from unbalanced bond dipole moments now a molecule with an inversion center cannot be polar since in such a molecule all bond dipole moments cancel. Similarly molecules with n C2 axes perpendicular to the primary Cn axis cannot be polar. For the same reason, bond dipole moments are uh, equal and oppositely directed. And finally, molecules 
with horizontal mirror planes. Cannot be polar. And so polar molecules are one of the following four point groups. C1, CS, CN, or CNV. For example, the dibromo difluoromethane molecule is polar, and recall, is a C2V molecule while carbon tetrafluoride is not polar. So new definition, molecules which are not super imposable on their mirror images or on their mirror image are called chiral especially by organic chemists, or dissymmetric, especially by inorganic chemists. Now, the ability of chiral molecules to rotate plain polarized light is called optical activity where rotation counterclockwise is called level rotation while rotation clockwise is called dextro rotation. Now molecules with no improper rotation axes are chiral and hence optically active now recall that an S1 axis is the same as reflection through a mirror plane and an S2 axis is the same as inversion. 
So optically active molecules have no mirror planes inversion centers nor other SN axes And so chiral molecules are one of the following three point groups. C1, Cn, or dn. Now after we study matrices we will look at how point groups are used to predict which atomic orbitals contribute to bonding. So what is a matrix? A matrix is a rectangular that is two-dimensional array of numbers. Later we'll study multi-dimensional arrays called tensors. The numbers in this array or the array are called the entries of the matrix. Now a matrix has a size. The size of a matrix is the number of rows by the number of columns which is expressed in the form M by N So let's look at some notation. The entry in row I and column J of the matrix A is denoted by enclosing the matrix A in parentheses and adding the subscripts IJ or using the lowercase letter for the matrix with the subscripts I and J.